Uh, we've got some new court dates to discuss. Chad Daybell, the so-called doomsday uh, prophet. Uh, October 29th, he's got a motion uh, for joinder that will be heard. And then November 24th, this is a new date. It's been rescheduled from October to November. The motion to dismiss will be argued and the motion to change venue. All of these are important. The joinder, you know, should Chad and Lori's cases be together? And then the motion to dismiss. Obviously, if it gets dismissed, then, you know, it's gone. There's, there's not going to be any trial. So um, tonight, I thought it would be a good opportunity with this pending motion to dismiss uh, coming up, a good opportunity to take a look at some of the evidence against Chad Daybell and evaluate it and figure out whether or not there'll be enough to, to hold this over or to uh, keep it from being dismissed. Let's start, though. T to me, the biggest piece of evidence when it comes to Chad Daybell is just taking a look at his backyard. I mean, let's take a look. What happened in his backyard? I mean, that's his house, his backyard. And, and what are they doing? They're digging up bodies of those two little children. J.J. and Tylee, their remains found in his backyard. You know, that's, and you, that's not, is that direct evidence? No, it's not direct evidence because you don't see him committing the crime. But that is circumstantial evidence, and that is powerful circumstantial evidence. I don't know if you need, even need more than that. Let's bring in Court TV special contributor Ashley Banfield, who's with us tonight. I, I think the case starts right there, right? I mean, it's, it's his house, his yard, his fire pit, his little pet cemetery. It's all his. Look, I I always love it when people say, bah, you got a circumstantial case. And they dismiss that. Like, somehow that's not a strong, powerful case. Well, I, honestly, if you're in the business of covering this stuff on a regular basis, you know as well as I do, Vinny, some of the most uh, powerful cases are circumstantial cases. And so when you have two children's bodies buried in your backyard, and one of them has been burned, and there's evidence of that child's body in the fire pit, too. That's extraordinary evidence. And it can be stronger than a little old lady across the street who said she thought she saw something in the dark, and she wasn't wearing her glasses. That's direct evidence. Nowhere near as strong as, oh, I found the bodies in your backyard. So you're right. Those pictures right there are everything you need to know about why we are talking so much about this case and why we often talk about this case um, almost like it's a murder case. It isn't yet a murder case, not as pertains to Chad and Lori. But I always emphasize Y-E-T in capital letters. Absolutely. All right, let's go through some more of the evidence. I've got a few things lined up for you tonight, Ashley. Uh, Melanie Gibb, we know her well, good friend of Lori Vallow, mm. and, you know, witnessed some things, but she also, um, Chad told her to do something or not do something. Let's take a listen. Approximately what time did you, were you called by Mr. Daybell that day? Late, late morning. Okay. What was the nature of that conversation? He said, hi, Melanie, this is Chad. Um, the Rexburg police are going to call you. Don't pick up. He okay. said, oh, okay. Uh, where did the conversation go from there? He, um, he let me know that the police were over at Lori Vallow's home in Rexburg and that um, they were inquiring about where JJ was and that she was going to tell the police that JJ was with me. Okay, how did you respond? In shock, and I can't recall if I said anything at that moment. Oh, I did say, after the shock, I said, JJ's not at Kay's house. And how did Mr. Davell respond to that? He said, no. Ashley. <laughs> this, this is Vinny. Um, listen, the what's, poli up, what's up, bro? The, the police <laughs> may be calling you, so if, if, if it comes up on call ID, just don't answer it, whatever you do, okay? Don't worry about it. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong. It's just don't answer. Because Vinny told me not to answer it. I, I'm not supposed to answer it, right, Vinny? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. That sounds criminal, Vinny. You're the lawyer. No, no, no. Listen, just don't pick up. What you don't say can't be used against you. Don't pick up, don't pick up. Don't Let me pick, okay. Whatever you do, police might be calling you. I'm not sure, but they might be calling Just it, don't pick up, whatever you do. It still, 
It still sounds criminal, Vinny. Well, You're telling me not to cooperate with the police? No, no, no. I'm just saying don't pick up. <laughs> Is that a roundabout way of saying, hey, don't pick up, don't talk to the police. And by the way, if you do, I got a few things that you should tell them. It's, it's unreal. I mean, to me, that... That is, that is something that just resonates when you put that in front of a jury, right? By the way, can we, can we make what we just did into like a TikTok? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. It looked like one. I mean, to me, it's just it's common sense. If anyone ever calls you up and says the police are going to call you and they tell you to do something, do the opposite. Because whatever do they're the telling opposite. you to do is, is just, it's not going to well, help you at all. And let me tell you something. She might not have been a very good witness, Vinny, but for the fact that she did eventually do the opposite and really cleaned up her act and will be able to show to jurors that, yes, initially I was kind of gobsmacked by it all and I didn't really know what was going on. I certainly didn't think these people had anything to do with the missing children. So I didn't think that what I was doing was anything other than kind of figuring it out as I went along live. Uh, but when I really should have put two and two together, I instantly called the police. I instantly said exactly what the truth was. And so I think when the jurors listen to her, if, when the jurors listen to her, I think they're going to actually appreciate her. I thought she was spectacular on the stand. Clean living, I mean, seems to go by, you know, the letter of the law, certainly in her personal life, you know, with, with regard to like traveling with a boyfriend at this day and in this day and age. She slept in a separate bedroom because the rules of her religion suggest that. So I think she's going to come across very well uh, to a jury, and what she says is going to be heavily weighted. All right, Ashley. Here's probably what I think is the most powerful evidence, right? Mm. The raccoon text. Yeah. Let's put it up on the screen. Chad Daybell, and, and again, this is the day where uh, prosecutors say the bodies were being uh, buried in the backyard. Chad Daybell to his wife, who is alive at the time. Well, I've had an interesting morning. I felt I should burn all of the limb debris by the fire pit before it got too soaked by the coming storms. Those coming storms. While I did so, I spotted a big raccoon along the fence. I hurried and got my gun. And he was still walking along. I got close enough that one shot did the trick. He is now in our pet cemetery. Fun times. Um, gonna shower now, then go right yeah. for a while at BYU. Love you. Love Love you. you. Uh, isn't BYU, isn't that where he would make out with Lori at, at the track? And Tammy yeah. writes back, good for you. Hours then, later. Look hours that. later, 11.56, yeah. he says gonna shower now. 2.47 p.m., she finally reads the text from you know, her uh, her husband, and he sees right away that she's responded one minute later, well, I, I'm back now. I'm back now. I'm here. Me, to me, this puts him there. <laughs> He's talking about this crazy raccoon story. Too many details. Like, who is going to text all these details? I mean, right. maybe in a phone call you explain it, or you say, oh, you know, whatever. You know, I, who does that? Sure. So you and me, we don't, but the defense lawyer is going to say, Chad had this kind of a relationship with his wife. They talked about everything, the mundane, the dumb. They didn't have a lot going on. They were bored of each other. So, you know, the littlest tasks in life would be, you know, what they had to talk about that day. You and I, and maybe the 12 people on a panel, uh, will say, yeah, I don't buy it. Because you don't check your common sense when you go into a jury room. You don't check your common sense when you show up for jury duty. You don't check your common sense when you listen to someone tell you a story, show you evidence like that, and then try to explain it away. Yes, some people, Johnny Cochran, are extremely convincing. But generally speaking, we all have something called that little voice inside our head or that little thing that lives in our gut that tells us, I smell a rat. And I think people are going to smell a rat. Yeah. Hey. I've had an interesting morning. I felt I should burn all of the limb debris by the fire pit before it got too soaked by the coming storms. Yes, drama. Oh, the, the, the doubt doth protest so darn much. I mean, did you pluck a whisker as well that morning? And how did the water pick 
feel when you were doing your teeth? Did you tell your wife that as well? And then did you step in poop and have to scrape it off before you walked on the drive? I mean, come on. There are just some things that aren't dramatic that we don't share no matter how bored we are of our spouse. Yeah, it just, you know, it, it just reeks of, I'm setting this up so I have a cover story in case the neighbor saw me in the backyard or if you see some dirt yeah. or whatever. Anyway, it's hey, like, I've got one like more Mark for you. Mark Sievers. You remember Mark Sievers? He called his neighbor to say, my wife got back from our trip to Connecticut. I'm still up here in Connecticut. I can't possibly have murdered anybody down there. But could you just go over and check on her, a grown woman? Like the neighbor never heard from him before. What are you calling me for? This is not normal. It's not normal conversation. Jurors get it. When Absolutely. When abnormal conversations happening and it's really conveniently an alibi, they smell a rat. Uh, by the way, um, yesterday was the, the anniversary of the death of Tammy Daybell, Chad's yeah. wife. So, um, you know, to me- Let's not forget about that. I, I really firmly believe that, that the investigators are working extremely hard toxicology to figure out what it was that actually killed her because it wasn't just- Oh, she was just getting weaker and weaker. Uh, they're looking for what they think really killed her. And they're going to the end of the world to get help in figuring out what really killed her. Absolutely.